Give me better players, I give you better results. Eric Ten Hag has demanded of Ineos. Welcome to the United Hotspot. My name is Webb. It's a quick Manchester United update this morning, this afternoon, or this evening, depending on where you are. But have you subscribed? Have you liked the video you've watched? Well, it's very important for this channel that you like and subscribe. Please do it as we get proper into this talk. Now, Eric Ten Hag, we know, has been speaking certain statements, and to some people, they have been saying he's talking himself into uh, being asked because of statements he's making after games, talking about how United is the most exciting team, talking about how they play very good. Well, not so many people are moved by his statements, but he's not uh, ex uh, exactly worried because it, it seems to be oozing confidence left, right, and center. Now, remember, he admitted himself that just, uh, I think it was before the uh, uh, Coventry game, or uh, th that in the pre-match press conference, he, he revealed that he had a, a, a meeting, he, ch he had a chat with uh, uh, Jason Wilcox. And it is believed that one of the things he made clear to Jason Wilcox is that he will need better quality players in the summer transfer window if he's going to get results going forward for Manchester United. Now, that means two things. That first of all, he's certain that he's going to be there in the next summer transfer window because of how he's been involved in everything, planning the preseason and everything that is happening, he's being involved as the manager. So he's confident that he will be there. But also, in a recent uh, post-match interview, the one after the one-all draw, he came out and said clearly that Manchester United will not be, he seemed to suggest that he will, we will not be competing for the title next season unless we improve on the quality of the players. And that's why he's saying he's hoping and believes that they will have a good summer and he will sign better players. Now, bear in mind, Ten Hag has already signed players like Casemiro, he signed players like Lisandro Martinez, he signed players like uh, uh, Andre Onana, he signed uh, players like, uh, like, like uh, Rasmus Hoyland, he signed uh, Anthony Dos Santos, who I think is the worst of his signings. He brought in Sofia Namrabat on loan, who is also another poor signing. But if you look at some of the players he's brought in, they look good. They have been decent, to be honest. Some of them have been, have, have been decent. Casemiro, besides being edgy, the first season was that he was an important player for United. Even now, he's still fairly important, given the lack of quality in the team. Uh, you look at Lisandro Martinez, with, besides the injuries, I think he's a top quality player, and everyone knows that. Uh, you look at Rasmus Hoyland, promising striker. He's young, a lot to learn, but he's a promising uh, young player. Andre Onana can, uh, caused, has caused division, confusion, but in terms of how he wants to play, Onana is a very good goalkeeper on the feet, but I also think he's a world-class goalkeeper, without a shadow of a doubt. So uh, you look at that and you're thinking, he maybe has got all reasons to be confident in himself and what he can do during the summer transfer window. Remember, at first he was saying, judge me when I have the full squad. He has not really had enough of the full squad, really. Most of the players come and go. He's uh, full of injuries, left, right, and center. So it's not a good space for him as manager uh, to say, well, I, I did my best because you can't do your best without your best players. But he's saying now that if he has a good summer transfer, it is going to give him a lot of boost in terms of being what he wants to do with his team. So what that is, is that it's a vote of no confidence in the so many players that we all see a work at Manchester United. Now, Ineos then have got them to make a decision because each of the managers United is being linked with is making a demand, including Ten Hag himself, because he's another link. Guys, we are still linked with Ten Hag staying. It's a link. Don't think he's comfortable in the job. Now, he's also making his demands that I'm staying if you're giving me better quality players. Very important because, I mean, the man will, will die with all these players. Imagine the stress we get as the fans. What about him as the manager of these players who are earning so much money but are not putting in a shift on the pitch? What exactly do you expect from him? It's always going to be a difficult place for him. So he has made his demands clear and Ineos are now trying to draft a plan to try and put in place what to do. Remember, by the way, there is a bit of division when it comes to legends of Man United. There are those who think Eric Ten Hag should be given time. I listened to uh, Peter Schmeichel and he seemed to suggest, he was talking to Bean Sports, I think in a, uh, one of the, I think was an analyst in the studio. And he seemed to suggest that Thomas Tukio is uh, a good option, of course, without saying it directly. Of course, he heaped praise on Tokyo, uh, saying he's a high-profile manager, what we know, I said it here, he's a high-profile manager, uh, and he says he spoke to him. I've, not, I've never spoken to Tokyo, so uh, I, th I think that gives him an edge, but also I'm not a legend of the club. Uh, but he said 
Uh, Thomas Tukio seems to have a presence, as if to suggest that Eric Hag doesn't have the presence, which again is known. I don't think it's really news that Eric Ten Hag's, uh, you know, he, he, his his presence is a little different. Tuchel always commands and perhaps a little bit more respect naturally as a manager uh, than than Eric. But there are certain. What I'm trying to say is that there are certain legends of the club that are still not sold on Eric Ten Hag that I think will use whatever they can in their power as legends of the club. And this is a, a Manchester United that. Certain legends do have a lot of, you know, power. Uh, if I would say, perhaps they don't have a, a vote, but they have their the, what they say matters a lot. But there is a bit of division in them. But most of them don't seem to be backing Eric Ten Hag, even if they know that the issues around the club are beyond him. They, some of them, don't seem to be backing him entirely. Of course, based on some of the decisions, the tactical uh, decisions he's made, some of the things he has made, the player management, and all that. So uh, Peter Schmeichel seemed to suggest that. So that's why I'm saying that. Eric Ten Hag's job is still under shake, but Ineos are now getting closer to making a decision. But he's also making demands. Now, to some people, the demands Eric Ten Hag is making, the statements he's making now that are coming out in the, in the media are probably the reason he might get sacked. They're saying he's talking himself into being sacked. That is, I saw that from Sky Sports, actually. They said he's talking himself into being sacked. I spoke about it here uh, sometime that I, the, some of the things Eric Ten Hag says after games is... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, perhaps could be the reason he might not be trusted by Ineos, even before the tactics. He might be sacked more for how he speaks in the media uh, than because of, you know, what exactly he does on the pitch or not. Because certain statements do not really augur well with anyone who is a loyal of Manchester United, more so because of the timing at which they come. You don't go lose against Fulham at home and you're talking about how you played well. You don't talk about, you know, how we are... Uh, we are we are not so far off Manchester City after losing at, at home against them. You don't talk about how we play the most exciting game after struggling against Burnley or Sheffield United. So you look at all those and you're thinking, these are not statements of a manager who has got a long time, a very long time in his job at Manchester United. But Ineos then have a decision because you don't sack him without an option. So the options are also there, making their own demands and also not exactly the most convincing. The reality is, the Manchester United job is a whole, 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 whole huge mess itself. It's a whole problem, not an easy one. And Ten Hag seems to be saying, whatever happens, well, I don't care. I will not resign, but I also not make it easy. I'll make my demands. I'll make my... So it's like him against the world. I mean, it's mostly him against the world, yes. Whereas there are a few people who are backing him. He feels, I think, you know, certain people don't respect him. They don't respect his position. They... He's, he's fighting. It's, 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 a, it's an ugly thing, by the way, to see. You feel for him at times, but uh, for me, I like that now he has come out to make a statement to suggest that he needs quality players because before anything, before we get to him, the most important thing is for Eric Ten Hag to be given quality players, and with quality players, we can properly judge him. We've worked on the structure around him, get a proper, better medical team around him, but get rid of these Rashfords who don't want to play, get rid of all these mediocre players, and give him players who will match the Man City players, the quality we are seeing at Arsenal, the quality at Liverpool, the quality at Aston Villa, because even Aston Villa and Newcastle are also ahead of United now. So the man has got every right to come out there and make all the, these demands. Otherwise, he has hinted honestly, and some people will bash him for being honest. But he has said honestly that right now where we are, we, are not, we might not be in position to compete for the title even next season. That's the honest truth. You might hate it as a United fan because of our ego. But for me, I like that honestly in the state we are in. We need all honesty we can get in the state United is in. Uh, 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 he says we might compete for top four. We will be able to compete consistently for top four because the, the competition is even broader now. Chelsea will be better, obviously, next season. Newcastle is there. Tottenham is there. Uh, Aston Villa is now in the game. Uh, you never know what West Ham could, be, it could become. You talk about teams like now, of course, Arsenal. Liverpool, uh, talk about Man City itself. The competition is broad that you need to step up your game and there is it's no longer a two-horse race. The man said it in all honesty, but of course there are people who will castigate him for his statements, uh, 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 especially because of the timing. But again, uh, those are the people who do not want to be uh, who do not want to be uh, real. If you're, if you're real, you'd agree that really we may not want to think about competing for the title next season. It's a process. We need time to work towards getting there. At least we first want to get a clear identity, look firm and solid, be consistent in it, and maybe later we will be in the title conversations. But 
Let's wait and see whether Ineos will offer or will deliver the demands of the both uh, of the boss. First, if they keep him. Two, if they raise the funds because the quality players come at a price. Which price? I'm not sure. Manchester United will be able to meet unless they swallow humble pie and bring back Mason Greenwood because among the quality players that Eric Ten Hag needs is that little boy who is turning the La Liga upside down and getting it down on his feet. My name is Webb. This is the United Hotspot. Subscribe and I'll catch you later.